Rome 2, a total war saga, or at least that's what it should have been called, is in my opinion an awful game. Welcome to a bashing of it. Three Roman families, great, but they don't stand out and are less unique than the three we got in Rome 1. Yet another game that does Carthage dirty, making them weak, meagre and insignificant, again with no real understanding at all of how the most underrated empire in gaming should actually play and feel. The Barbarians, a series of mostly copy and pasted factions, if you're going to add them, especially as DLC, at least put in some time and effort to make them stand out. Something Attila started and Warhammer 2 does beautifully. The Seleucid Empire, a broken down wreck with puppet states. I get you want it to feel balanced, but real history is not balanced. Where is the fun in balance? This faction could have been a unique Western Roman Empire style of campaign or a final boss for Rome to meet in the East, but instead they put in the extra effort for it to feel like another copy and pasted waste of space. Bactria, a wonderful, culturally diverse faction that... Oh wait, they have barely anything to reflect that. More copy and pasting. If CA can copy and paste a faction, I can copy and paste a sin. Nomadic tribes, that are actually not nomadic at all. Only one British and one Germanic faction is playable. Instead of now putting in the great amount of effort to copy and paste, why not just do nothing? They perhaps thought. Syracuse does not start with walls, something I made sure to mock when writing the descriptions for Total Conquest mod. But what's more embarrassing is starting Carthage with next to nothing, a basic port what is this tiny village called Carthage? Dumb, unnecessary victory requirements. At least it's flavour for other factions, I guess, but meh. No interesting cutscene that gives you a taste of a torture to come or your past history. Depressed sounding, floppy fish mouth advisor talking. No emotion, no character. No explanation of why we are at war with Etrusca, how they intend to murder our children in their sleep or how they tear out the eyes of our grandfathers. Just the same info I could get from entering the diplomacy tab. Ah, the food mechanic. Something that is fun for the first few turns and then the entire system is under control. In Shogun 2, food could really halt your expansion. In Attila, the lack of food could be devastating. In Rome 2, you'll never have an issue with it after turn 5, making it obsolete. Limited build slots. It works in Attila. In Attila, you are meant to be pressured, sweaty and squeezed. Rome 2 should be about the freedom gained through conquering, not the limitations. Why is Brundisium more developed than Rome? At least give Rome a few unique buildings. Oh wait, no room. Wow, cool. Slaves and corruption mechanics. Shame the modifiers are weak and money flows so easily. Otherwise, this could have been a great feature, but instead it has next to no effect. Public order. This will never be a problem in the metropoles, meaning cities like Rome will never revolt. Yep, because that's historical immersion. Culture, just a feature to slow down conquest. That's great, but it needs a bit more to it. Cannot complain too much, it's on par with the predecessor titles, like the Rome Barbarian Invasion Religion System, but would be nice to see a little more development since the last decade. Wonders, we have Mount Vesuvius, great. Why not a way to clearly see it and have it stand out so you can see the effects by hovering over it. Maybe text to separate wonders from natural wonders, or maybe that would be too much effort. Maybe a little video clip celebrating when you capture it. It's a great mechanic. Why hide it? Security. 
Has anyone ever used this feature to min-max anything? What's the real point? Maybe build on it, make it a real feature that can be greatly impacted by buildings and characters, maybe weakened by spies, and the level maybe impacts events and other scripts. Rome doesn't have a port. I know it's not technically on sea, but rivers exist for a reason. Come on. What's really the point of having the fourth port? Three work well. Trade, fishing, war. It makes you pick. A feature I like. But why have this awkward one that's a cross between trade and war? Building cards are a little dry looking. Main issue is, they are too small. These are my cities. The conquest and development of them is why I play. Can you give it some life? Only two types of barracks. What happened to stables? Archery range. Do what you do with all other games and let me pick. I guess it's because of the limited building slots. You know what, this feature is causing more issues than it's probably worth. Just fly across water. No docking time needed, no ambush battles that can happen on the coast, and less need for the fleet mechanic. CA either cuts out mechanics or creates new weaker mechanics to render the other good mechanics borderline obsolete. Spies, are you really telling me that this spy can carry this much food? Here is the mathematics. According to this source, at the start date, Rome itself had 275k people. Let's say, once you upgrade Rome, Rome is then generating minus one food. Therefore, on average, 275k people equals one food. This spy in Etrusca can steal two food, assuming each Roman has an average of two meals a day. Are you telling me, in the space of six months, she single-handedly carries 99 million meals worth of food back to Rome. From my calculations, the distance here is roughly 120 kilometers. According to the internet, someone can walk one kilometer in 10 minutes, six in an hour, 120 in 20 hours. Let's say she works a normal nine to five, but every day. One journey, there and back again, will take 40 hours, which will be 5 days. Divide the 180 days, 6 months, by 5 days for each journey, as I'm assuming she walks at a normal human speed. That is 36 trips. Round the meals to 100 million and divide by 36, which gives us 277,777.7 recurring meals per journey. Round down to 270k, as I rounded upwards earlier. Given it measures it in what appears to be bread, let's go by that and say the average meal is one loaf of bread. CA, are you seriously telling me this woman carried for 8 hours a day? Every day, no day off, not weighing her down, 270,000 loaves of bread. The birth of ridiculous single entity units was here, ladies and gentlemen. Rome starts with a fleet. Weird tech tree that creates more a single meta gameplay, rather than something to seriously plan and think about. The unit cards. Ah, oh, sorry, that's my HD edition. Let me go back to vanilla. There we go. Awful. Whose idea was this? All the units look too samey, which makes the copy and pasting of factions look even worse. It is mechanics like this that make winning major battles sometimes feel pointless. See, so trying to make armies feel more unique by having less. And then going back on that with crazy mass recruitment features that take away the unique thing they were going for in the first place, taking out the strength of the system whilst simultaneously doubling down on the weakness. No thoughts, you have a fortify option instead, but given limited army slots, it makes this feature useless for anything long term. No garrison specific building, this would be okay if we could create our own garrison, but wait, we can't, really, due to limited army slots. 
boring edicts that don't really make regions unique, as for most, you will pick the same thing anyway. Why not add more unique ones, but with requirements? Resources, but they are not needed for buildings. Only making money, which is easy and needs little attention anyway, making them pointless. Minor missions, cool, but the rewards are boring. In fact, they offer a smaller range of unique rewards than Rome 1 did. Why not have them trigger events that can be answered with a yes or no, or have them unlock a one-off unique unit? Just something more than gold. Faction-wide tax levels. I remember hating how much of a step back Empire, Napoleon and Shogun 2 were with taxes. But Rome 2 takes it a whole leap backwards. Boring inferior trade mechanics. In a game that really should be heavily centred around trade, if it wanted to be historical. Boring lines of text that are repetitive and from characters who appear to be super low quality, and often, again, copy and pasted. There's a lot I could say on diplomacy, but I'll let them off here. All Total War Diplomacy is bad. No character, no unique faces, few interesting traits that develop over time, giving the player next to no real attachment to their campaign. I can remember almost all of my Rome 1 campaigns based on the characters that I built along the way. I barely remember any Rome 2 campaign that I played. What effect does campaigning in winter really have? Next to nothing compared to what it should. Is anyone seriously going to scroll through and check stuff in for records? Authority, cunning, zeal. Make them more impactful. They are just two weak modifiers for me to care. Med 2, Attila, these can be game changing. Boring women. Divide et impera does it much better. They had potential here to bring life to female characters on the internal political scene in a very fun and historical way, but they didn't. CA logic is, why go with something cool, fun and historical and represents women in a great way, when you can go with something that is less historical and will divide the fan base, introducing modern era political questions as if Total War did not have enough internal divides generated by CA. What are all these? I have no idea. Most are pointless. I don't have the time or the care to read them all. Attila does it much better, just having eight. But having those eight more impactful. Why not also use these to bring factions some more flavour? Maybe each culture gets a few unique ones. Rome could be able to adopt barbarian sons to use to gain control and power in barbarian regions later. Carthage could have a special colonisation option, etc. No populations. Going from Republic to Empire should be a game changer, where before you click that button, you say to yourself, everything is going to be different now. Not simple, dull modifiers. The Civil War always happens. Why? Civil Wars are annoying. The entire gameplay is just a copy and paste of settlements you have already conquered. Maybe make it more historical and interactive, with a chance to confederate the Empire safely together once it is clear one power has beaten the other. Auto-resolve giving guaranteed results and easy wins. You can beat the game just by spamming Rorarii. And there we go. Oh, but Melkor, DEI, the mod Divide et Impera, fixes from my count 12 of these, which is great, but it's not a fix. It's not an excuse for CA to put in low effort, and DEI could fix all of these if they had the proper modding tools given to them, which, by CA not allowing, alone doubles the amount of sins, in my opinion. And there we go, 50 sins of Rome 2, and I did not even touch on the worst bit, the battles. And besides talking about the Civil War, everything mentioned came from only turn 1. 
That's all I need. One turn on the campaign map and I spotted 50 issues that are either dull, broken or unhistorical. So there we go, I hope you enjoyed the Trashing of Rome 2 Speedrun Edition. Melgon.